Hello everyone, welcome back to another video from Shomu's Biology. In this series of lectures, we are discussing about protein trafficking in cell. How exactly protein is, after the production, is modified, sorted and delivered to their destination is our topic of discussion. In this particular lecture, we are going to talk about one such wing of protein trafficking that is the secretory pathway. The secretory pathway linked with both anterograde pathway that is the delivery of protein from ER to the membrane and the retrograde pathway that is from membrane to the ER. So basically, we have discussed about this part in a previous lecture, the basics and overview of the uh, protein trafficking and vesicular trafficking. So if you missed that lecture, I'll recommend you to watch that lecture. You'll have much better understanding uh, to understand this lecture if you know that. So I'll move on and I'm going to take uh, a color and here I'm going to state uh, the facts regarding this. So basically what we're talking about is a two separate direction. We have ER and we have membrane. So the movement of protein is from ER to the membrane right after the synthesis because recall the understanding of the last lecture that the proteins which are destined to be delivered and secreted out of the cell are after production transported inside the ER lumen and that's how they are packaged in vesicles from ER, buds off and continue the journey from ER to the Golgi and then to the membrane. And there is another pathway of reversal from membrane to the Golgi then to the ER. So there are these two set of pathways. The forward pathway that is ER to Golgi to the membrane is known as anterograde pathway and the backward pathway from membrane Golgi to the ER known as retrograde pathway. This is what we understood in the last lecture. Now we are going to take it a little more further because I told you that in the forward lecture from ER to Golgi to membrane, the process, how the protein is delivered. It's not like the protein floats in the cytosol. No, it never does that. Protein is packaged inside vesicle, right? And even inside the vesicle, the protein is not free floating. So inside the vesicle is bound to proper receptor proteins. These are present in the membrane of the vesicle. And the vesicle that forms is protected structurally by forming a cage-like structure or a lattice-like structure. With the help of this cage-like or lattice-like structure, these vesicles are tra traveling from ER bulged, bulged off to the Golgi, again bulging off to the membrane. This is the journey of proteins in the protein trafficking pathway. So <clears throat> what we are going to discuss now is the role of one important family protein that is COP protein. Okay, COP2 and COP1. Both of these proteins are necessary and important in terms of protein trafficking pathways in the cell. COP2 is involved in the process of anterograde pathway. So COP2 involved here. Okay, I'll take a different color for better explanation. Otherwise, a single color does not seem attractive. So COP2 is involved to the anterograde pathway. And the other one that we are going to talk about is this COP1 involved in the retrograde pathway okay and here we are going to see the importance and involvement of COP2 and COP1 in both these secretory pathways. So I am going to share a list uh, of steps that are involved in the process of COP2 and COP1 mediated protein trafficking pathway and there are these five important steps where they differ right. So let's begin. The first step is the cargo selection. How exactly the cargo selected? The cargo selection process for the COP1 and COP2 is different. So first we will here talk about COP2 and here we are going to talk about COP1. Okay. In COP2, uh, the cargo selection is done based on uh, the production and basically here right after the protein is synthesized. Generally, how to know whether the protein is to be uh, delivered towards the membrane or to be retained. Cells have unique nomenclature systems, tagging system. Okay. For example, uh, if you have different addresses, we have uh, a proof for the address. Similarly, the cells need proof of address to be delivered by the proteins. Proteins need to show the proof. If the proof is correct, cell will deliver the protein to that address. These are known as sequence tags 
or localization signals so localization signals are there and if our protein contains the localization signal of this in the c terminal domain so the proteins once synthesized the polypeptide it has a n terminal site a c terminal site the c terminal site contains this four amino acid k d e l these are all written in a single letter code of amino acids now if you want to understand what is k what is d what is e what is l and if you want to remember this for your lifetime i have a mnemonic video a trick video regarding the amino acid basics and amino acid single letter and triple letter codes you can watch that video so this k d e l of the c terminal domain whenever this is present in a protein in a polypeptide that polypeptide is signaled to be retained so this is a retention signal that is actually originated in golgi apparatus it's originated in golgi apparatus inside the golgi and whenever the proteins carry this kdel signal in c terminal domain of the golgi inside the golgi then they should be retained so throughout the process of trafficking they are retained while they don't have any kdel but they are prepared they are produced near where near the endoplasmic reticulum so those protein once produced they are in touch with a particular translocon known as sec 61 in this case the translocon that they use sec 61 is the common one that uh, they produce for the secretion but in this case of cop2 they also utilizes sec 24 okay so sec 24 is specifically designed to interact to the protein which is need, which is uh, involved in the process of anterograde pathway by cop2 mediated pathway sec24 okay so sec24 translocon associated it will bring the protein inside of the endoplasmic reticulum lumen so ultimate destiny of the protein from cytosol to the er lumen okay that part is done in case of cop2 mediated transport in case of cop1 mediated transport the journey begins in the golgi apparatus if the protein has kdel in the c terminal site that is the signal so that first part is clear between the two now i'll move to the next part that is the coat formation the coat formation is basically once the protein the nascent peptide nascent peptide means the peptide which is just prepared just produced that linear polypeptide is dragged inside the endoplasmic reticulum and here they start forming coat and in this case cop2 obviously cop2 are the coat proteins basically these are the coat forming proteins and this coat proteins they start forming what is known as a cage like structure a cage like structure this cage like structure is built and basically this cop protein that is present to the membrane of the endoplasmic reticulum interact to sec24 and they bind to sec24 so cop2 protein sec24 interaction is necessary and they are going to fold the protein properly there and they make the protein ready for bulging out then what happen here is bulging out the vesicle budding the vesicle budding means basically once so the vesicle is ready inside of which our target protein is already ready to pack but it is linked with this cop2 cascade a structure proteins they are linked with it and then what happen is that vesicle budding requires another accessory protein to act here known as sar1 sar1 is an accessory protein and this sar1 accessory protein what it does it is a gtpase and what gtpase do gtpase utilizes energy from gtp hydrolysis and this helps in budding of this vesicle from the endoplasmic reticulum so remember the endoplasmic reticulum what happen is that the, the er the endoplasmic reticulum has this sort of structure where cop2 proteins are interacting the protein is already folded and attached to it and then vesicle budding will take place means basically this budding is complete with all this cop2 coat intact and our protein is linked to this but this budding off of the vesicle requires energy from atp hydrolysis and that is gtps activity not atp gtps activity which is catalyzed by sar1 protein okay once vesicle budding is done then this vesicle will move and it will move towards golgi apparatus golgi apparatus it will fuse with golgi apparatus 
and it will deliver the protein to the Golgi network. And inside the Golgi, the protein will be further modified, will be modified chemically, will be chemically modified. Okay, and then uh, once the modification is done, and so once the protein is delivered to the Golgi apparatus, so what happens is that all these COP2 proteins are released in the Golgi membrane again, Golgi apparatus, the membrane of Golgi, and then again they are reassembled, they are recycled, recycled, they are recycled. That's how the process completes and concludes at the end. Okay, these are all the different steps of a COP2 mediated protein trafficking. Now we are going to change the color. I am going to take a different color. I am going to take a black one, brown one, okay? To explain you, COP1 mediated pathway, which is retrograde pathway, occurs in the reverse direction. Remember, I told you that a protein with KDL means they are ready for the next round. They are ready. So I am going to change the color here. So let's, let's change it to black. I think it will be better if we change it to black. So KDL is ready. Once KDL signaling is there, then it will start the journey that is the coat formation again coat formation will be done by cop protein again coat forming protein here cop 1 but in this case there is a minor difference between the structure of the vesicle that built by the cop 2 and cop 1 so that signal we initially <clears throat> help the protein to move from the golgi to the retrograde pathway to the reverse so whenever kdl is present it means obviously it's a reversal signal retention protein retention pathway so cop1 along with that will attach to this kdl because in this case in the golgi apparatus what happen is that there are kdl receptors okay and in the kdl receptors our protein can bind this is our protein with kdl signal with the kdl signal it will bind to the kdl receptor and then after it binds to the kdl receptor what happen bulging off so this is receptor this is protein with KDL and rest of the Golgi apparatus remain as it is. So it will bulge off. It will bulge off. It's bulge itself off. After the bulging is done, then vesicle budding. So basically, this is the budding of the vesicle. But for again, for the budding of the vesicle, it requires energy. GTPS pathway. Okay. And ARF1 is the GTPS used for a COP1 mediated pathway, ARF1, right? So ARF1 is involved in this pathway, while well, ARF1 is another GTPS, it helps in the budding of the vesicle and once the vesicle is buds off, then again the vesicle will move from Golgi apparatus to where? To ER or to a location known as ER Golgi intermediate. ER Golgi intermediate complex. Okay. Either it will fuse to ER or fuse to ER Golgi intermediate complex. Any of that. So fusion will be done. And once the fusion is done, so automatically we know that the protein is transported back to the ER. So in COP2 mediated pathway, we saw how a protein after produced in the cytosol transported through the ER lumen to Golgi apparatus. Finally, to the you know, it's ready and it can move towards the membrane, but this is the direction of movement. While in COP1, the protein is need to be retained. So with KDL signal, it's going to be retained from the Golgi to the ER, to the reverse direction. And in this whole pathway of movement through the Golgi apparatus, there are different sections of the Golgi. Cis, medial, trans, these are the different systems which we haven't discussed here. Because that's a Golgi apparatus model. Cisterny maturation model is one model to describe the formation of Golgi apparatus. But that's not our concern right now. We'll discuss that some point later. And then finally, coat disassembly. Means after it is delivered to the ER again, all the coat, coat proteins will disassemble. And they are now ready for a return back to the Golgi apparatus. Because they are going to be needed and required in the Golgi apparatus again. So these are the two set of pathways that are involved in the process of COP2 mediated protein trafficking and COP1 mediated protein trafficking. Remember the involvement of proteins SEC24 and SAR1 in case of COP2 pathway and KDL signaling and ARF1 is for the COP1 pathway. Okay. 
यही चीज को ध्यान से रखना है पढ़ना है इसी हिसाब से राइट सो आई बिलीव यू है क्लियर अंडरस्टैंडिंग यहाँ पे एक समरी के तौर पे बोल देते हैं कि जो कॉप टू सिस्टम है जो कि सीधा डिरेक्शन हम बोलते हैं वहाँ पे सेक 24 फोर इन्वॉल्व होता है एज अ ट्रांसलोकॉन वहाँ पे जो स्ट्रक्चर फॉर्म होता है विद कॉप टू और वो स्ट्रक्चर देखने में केज टाइप होता है उसके बाद जी के तौर पर सारवान प्रोटीन काम करता है और देन डिलीवरी गोल्जिया पार्टस में डिलीवरी होता है वहीं पे कॉप वन मेडिएटेड पाथवे में सिग्नलिंग चाहिए के डी एल सिग्नलिंग और वहाँ पे कॉप वन प्रोटीन इन्वॉल्व होता है वो कोड फॉर्म करता है कोड देखने में लैटिस लाइक स्ट्रक्चर होता है और वहाँ पे जी के तौर पे ए आर एफ वन काम करता है और वो डिलीवरी करता है फ्रॉम गॉल जी टू ई आर दैट्स द समरी फॉर कॉप वन मेडिएटेड ट्रैफिकिंग एंड कॉप टू मेडिएटेड ट्रैफिकिंग आई बिलीव यू हैव अ क्लियर अंडरस्टैंडिंग ऑफ दिस टॉपिक इफ यू लाइक दिस वीडियो प्लीज इट द लाइक बटन शेयर दिस वीडियो टू फ्रेंड्स एंड सब्सक्राइब टू दिस चैनल टू गेट मोर वीडियोज लाइक दैट इन फ्यूचर थैंक यू